Have you ever asked yourself if the school systems for food and drinks are effective? Have you ever wondered if you're making unnecessary sacrifices for your own discipline? Or do you think that schools provide food at affordable prices while also providing a pleasant service? In this documentary, we will hopefully talk about those subjects and maybe clear up a few things about them. We expect to obtain information by comparing the ideas of students and the ideas of teachers. However, many schools have different rules about different systems, so we are specifying the documentary to a local Nicaraguan school known as Nicaragua Christian Academy. Take a look around you. Look at how our field is green. I remember last year I used to complain about how there were so many brown patches and no grass whatsoever, and now I realize how stupid it is that instead of providing water for the students, we care more about green grass when I realize we're in Nicaragua. Does it really matter if we get dirty? I don't think so. Soccer is soccer. We're all going to have fun. Do you think that the resources and provisions of water are good? And if not, how could it improve? I didn't understand the question. Okay. Do you think that students are getting uh, the right amounts of water from you know, what you guys provide? Um, if you're talking about the amount of water that, like the water that's available to students mm -hmm. um, at our school, then I think I think we're trying to make sure that there's always water available in the different water coolers that are around the campus, and that we never run out of that water. So I think that there's as much water as students are drinking. I think students probably should be drinking more water than they do. Mm -hmm. um, but do you think a problem might be that? Some students don't bring water bottles and sometimes they can't even afford to buy one? Yeah, it might be, yeah. Um, although I doubt that there's students that can't afford to buy one if they could keep it and reuse it. Mm -hmm. um, if students would bring just an empty water bottle that they could keep on filling up, um, that's I think something that all students should be doing. Um, just so that they always have access to the water. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> Do you think that NCA provides enough water for every student and can it be improved? How can it improve? I mean, thinking about the question selfishly, mm, I've never gone thirsty. Except for, I guess, on the weekends when I'm here and no one's here to refill the water. Uh, but for me, I'm fine. Uh, as far as other students go, Maybe they're thirsty. <laughs> you think that they could provide it in a different way, like not just a tank, because some students might not have um, money to buy bottles or just don't have bottles. It's like they used to have water fountains, but they've never worked. So. I think the system that's here is pretty good. And uh, as the expression goes, if it's not broke, they'll fix it and I don't think it's that expensive to buy a Powerade bottle I mean that's what I do I buy a Powerade I did it today I just buy a Powerade bottle I rinse it out when I'm done and I use that for a week or two and then I get a new one whenever I want something other than water so it's, it's I think it's a pretty simple solution but then yeah if you don't have a bottle then what do you get a drink from but I don't think it's like a problem that keeps me up at night. Okay. Do you think that NCA provides enough water for its students and how could it improve? I think it provides plenty of water. The water bottles are everywhere. I do wish I had the water bottle next to my room. I don't know what happened to that, but somehow it disappeared a couple of weeks ago. So that's something that they could improve, bringing that water bottle back. Um, and do you think that the water tank is um, the only way that they can provide water, so maybe some students don't have water bottles and can't afford water bottles. Could there maybe be water fountains like there used to be, but actually make them work? Or? Um, I've never been here where there has been a work, working water fountain, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, but I think, uh, I think the water, the big bottles are fine for right now. Kids can reuse plastic water bottles and 
I don't, I don't think cost is an issue. And as a soccer coach, um, does your team have enough water? Do they? Um, I think it's pretty old school, but I think it's pretty Nicaragua style too. <laughs> Just have spigots on the side of the field. Uh, I know for basketball, uh, I uh, last year I started having taking a, a water jug from the cafetine, a uh, big one of those big yellow ones, uh, and filling that up with water so kids had water to drink on the court. And do you think that NCA spigots. provides enough water for its students? I don't think they do. Why not? They only have two water fountains or whatever you call them, and they're always empty. They they only have those water bottles that you have to like push the button like wait for it to fill up. And we don't have water fountains anymore. And if we do, they don't work. And also, not not everybody has a water bottle at all times. Not everybody. And you don't think that water bottles are affordable? No. No. Um. Why not? Because we don't have money. <laughs> Okay, we don't get allowance. So what you're saying is you don't have money? Yes. Here we have a perfect example of how NCA might not be using their resources wisely. This fountain is probably wasting lots of water and energy, which we could be using in water fountains, which we do not have. Now, they use this to make NCA prettier. Now, would you say this fountain is pretty when it's actually green? They even paint it green? Um, that is not my definition of beauty. Thank you very much. We believe that NCA provides water for specific groups in specific occasions and does provide the correct amount of water supply, but maybe can improve in the way that it is offered. NCA could maybe provide water in working water fountains or offer cups for us is to put on. making profit from selling food and should it be? Could they make uh, food cheaper from getting it from a cheaper source? Mm -hmm. um, well, I can tell you the school doesn't get any money from selling food. Um, our cafeteria breaks even. Um, sometimes we even lose money in the cafeteria, basically because the, we charge an additional for all the products. We, we mark them up 25% from what we purchase them at, and that 25% margin um, goes to cover the fixed expenses like electricity, um, the staff, and we pay the, the salaries of the people that maintain the cafeteria. Um, equipment like the refrigerators and, and just the equipment that the cafeteria uses. But the school does not make any money from it. Um, it's hard. I know that the costs are have gone up and that's reflective everywhere. Um, I believe that NCA's food is cheaper than um, almost any other place where you could buy um, a similar plate of food. And But at the same time, it's because the costs everywhere have gone up. Would you say that school is making profit from selling food and should they be? Do they make food cheaper by getting it from another source? It's water. Anyway. Uh, do you think they make? Do I think they're making a profit? And should they be? <laughs> and can they make it cheaper by getting it from another place? In the cheaper source. Yes. Well, in relation to like what I know as far as U.S. prices go, as far as a meal, this is just like food from the grocery store. It's like a meal. Um, I remember when my I brought my parents here. We all had a lunch with a beverage. There was three of us, five dollars. That is unheard of in the United States. It's almost like five dollars is standard for a lunch in the United States. So five dollars for three people is pretty good. But that's looking at it relatively from my perspective. Um, should they make a profit? Well, hmm, I haven't thought about that question very long, but uh, I don't know. I don't have an opinion on that question. Would you say that the school is making profit from selling food, and should they be? Uh, I don't think they're making much profit. And should they? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think the food is good enough to be able to make profit. Would you profit. say that the school is making profit from selling food, and should it be? Could they make uh, food cheaper by getting it from some other place that's cheaper? I actually like the food, and it's a good, reasonable price, I think. Everybody I've told about the food at NCA, they say it's a very cheap price. It is. And uh, 
it's good like tasting food for the most part. Yes, except that so one time when they had a no, that one time steak. that guy found a cockroach like oh, yeah. in the food. Many teachers assume that students are not at the right level of maturity to be able to control themselves with food in class. While that might be right in some cases, we believe that school authorities don't care about the students' opinions and don't seem interested in testing the students' maturity and maybe find out that the group of students might be capable of much more than what they have. We believe in giving students a chance to prove themselves worthy and some students will prove that they really deserve the respect and opportunity to control themselves with food and drinks in class. Um, what um, limitations do you think should be set as far as food in class, during class? Um, personally, as a teacher, not as the director, but as a teacher, um, if students are eating while I'm teaching, and if there is either a noise because of that, because of rappers, or if they are not able to have their books out because there's food in, in there, and that's going to prevent me from doing a good job teaching the class. And so, um, I personally wouldn't like students to be eating while I'm teaching because it could interfere with uh, the way that I would teach my class. Um, and as a school, all of our teachers have decided that same thing and so we've decided to make it a school rule that students can't eat in class. Um, and so, in general, it's something that I think has been positive for classroom instruction. And um, one other problem that's caused sometimes by only some students, but some students, when they have had food in class, have left behind wrappers and other things. Um, and that's not fair for other people to have to clean up for them. Mm -hmm. I think that if a student even if we did allow students to be eating in class, they definitely should clean up after themselves. What limitations do you think should be set as far as food in class? I say no food in class. <laughs> I say no food in class because, one, because I get trash everywhere in my classrooms, like in the desks and whatnot. People say I'll be responsible, I won't throw trash in my desk, but I get it anyway. Um, I get more trash in my desk than responsible people telling me they won't do it. So I say no, just like a waste management. It's just really disgusting going around my desks and seeing like a bag of half-eaten chips waiting for ants to come. Uh, besides, it could be distracting. It's, uh, I mean, this is from a teacher's perspective. I know you guys are hungry. I am too. But I deal with it. I cowboy it up and, well... Uh, I don't, I don't let my stomach rule me. And that's, a, that's another thing, you're going into something deeper than that. When you have your stomach be the boss of you, tell you what to do, um, that's something else entirely. That's like a, that's spiritual. We, people don't really fast anymore, like, you know, take time to like not eat. But that was a common spiritual practice. And, I mean, the, Casillos are good, but they're not necessary. They're, uh, you're not gonna die. Go, uh, <clears throat> I challenge you, if you really think <clears throat> you can't go four hours without food, try it just one day going a day without food. Just a day, fast. You try that ancient spirit, like it's a spiritual practice, try it. Uh, fast, and then you'll realize how long you're, you're, you can really go. A human body can go more than more than 10 days without food and be fine. It's just our stomachs are like spoiled children and we obey our spoiled child and we just eat. That's what we do. We just obey our spoiled child and we just feed it and feed it and feed it and feed it. So when it's hungry, we feed it. And, that's, and when we don't, it cries and cries and cries and then we, we, we stop it from crying by feeding it. So, I say eating in class is not necessary. As much as students would like to think it is, it's not. What limitations do you think should be set as far as food in class? I feel like we should be able to drink Powerade and juices like that in class, but not food, because a lot of kids here are irresponsible. And they'll just leave it in the desk and make it all filthy. Yes. I think, like, 
ninth grade and up should be allowed to have like drinks in class. But like seventh and eighth graders are always spilling stuff Do on the floor. Do you think that it would work if teachers Man. were supervising <coughs> the people who ate in class? No. No. Never. Who would pay? Who who would super? I mean, what what kind of a job is that? Supervising to see people. Eat? I got a demerit okay. for so, eating a crap. Okay, say or people start going to college just become professional food trackers or something. I don't know, dude. You can't have food in college, so school is kind of preparing us for that. Too. Do you think there are foods that aren't uh, distracting? Mango. Then we should be able to eat fruit in class, like mango, mangoes. Things that are not filthy, such as watermelon, smelling old. You just said or mango, but then you just said not mango. Next question. Okay, um, you think it'd be a good idea or a good idea to allow students to get their food from different places during lunch, for example, pickles or delivered food or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, I mean, if there were other um, options for, for having food on campus, um, we would, I don't think that that would necessarily be a bad thing. Um, I think we would have to be prepared for something like that. The cafeteria doesn't make money, but if it, if um, less students started purchasing there, they would need to as well adjust so that they started preparing less food if, some, if people got lunch from other places. But we give students that freedom all the time. The students can bring their lunches from home. Um, and so there are, the cafeteria already knows that they don't, not all students will be eating there. And so they plan accordingly. Okay. Um, are some foods, well, not already asked that question. Would it be a good idea to allow students to get food from other places, like the Picos on the other side? For lunch or for break? Or for lunch or just uh, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Um, There's plenty of food. I think that students are uh, <laughs> allowed to get their food from other places. I think, I think like delivery. Yeah. You know, delivery would delivery be a very would cost nice a lot. Idea. It would be very distracting. Do you though? think they should be allowed? No, let's yeah. go by practicality here. No, honestly, delivery takes about half an hour. That would involve us calling before lunch. That means yeah. you call it in a class, which would be very distracting. Besides, we would also need cell phones to do that um, unless we got that. That's just to. an example. Do you think... Okay, no, because no, you either okay, need to no, deliver no, no, or you no. have to leave the school campus with okay, a very bad idea. Okay, but if their parents went to go get it for them no, at really. exactly at lunch. That's fine. They have people do that. That's not illegal. Okay, and just you yeah, guys. Uh, would changing school dietary customs affect students' attention or education uh, experience? There's a lot of studies that show that students who eat healthily um, do better in school. If you eat healthy food, um, then it helps. I mean, just the way that God made us, our bodies work better when we have healthy food. And sometimes if we have food that's not healthy, we can have sudden burst of energy and then like we start to get sleepy or lower energy because the food that we ate wasn't good for keeping our energy level high for a long period of time. And so it can actually make people sleep in class or, or not do as well um, if, and that can be one of the causes for that. Um, eating healthy is something that I think is good for everyone. Um, and I know different students are at different points as far as what they like to eat and what they don't like to eat. And I don't want to force anything on anyone, but we definitely want to encourage people to do um, eat healthy food. Um, would changing school dietary customs affect students' attention or education experience? No. 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 <laughs> uh, as far as what? Like, buying so, chips as opposed to... No, no, no. I mean, some people, some students that I know of have usually drink coffee in the morning and sometimes they don't get the chance to. And usually they seem dull. So do you think that maybe they could make exceptions or a few... Maybe they could like, provide energy for the student and that affect how they perform in the class? I don't think so. Um... I think there's a lot of emphasis on food trying to like make kids study better or something. I, I don't buy it. I think we should be able to overcome that. 
<laughs> if you're hungry, we're always hungry. Uh, overcome it. So, and there's plenty with a break time. And so you're really only in class. The longest you're in class is only three hours. And so I, I don't buy it that that food is uh, an issue for kids not performing well. I think there's ample time and ample opportunities to eat in between classes and. and so I don't think kids need any class. Would changing school dietary customs affect students' attention or education experience? Well, with these classes that we have nowadays that are very boring, they probably would. If we received a little bit more sugar, 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 sugar or sugar? Sugar! It's called sugar. <laughs> sugar. If we received a little bit more sugar, it'd probably be awake. Ah, so you're saying we should be allowed to eat sugar in ah, class? Ah, oh. I thought you Asuka. said we shouldn't be allowed. Well, I also said that I believe Asuka. frogs fly, but you know, they don't. Azúcar, azúcar, azúcar. What do you think, Randy? Um, I think that that's racial profiling, and I really don't appreciate that. What do you do? Um, I think, like, apples, for instance, have a lot of sugar, like fructose in them that gives you energy without actually artificial cane sugar. Um, and as I said before, I think we should be able to allowed to eat fruits in class. I think that would be profitable to both the mind, the mouth, the stomach, and the soul. And, um, very, yes. <laughs> Definitely. You would not need it. I just went too fast. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for hitting you. In That's the it. No, wait, wait. Ask me one more thing. <laughs> okay. You think there should be more junk? Are we on camera? That's so cool! <laughs>